Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we've got Dr. Bill Warger with us, as well as Noah Shaw. Bill is our Director of Photonics Education, and he's been leading the build out of a new group that seeks to develop a variety of content in hands-on as well as digital experiences to educate our customers in our communities. Noah has been working on our Thor Labs mobile lab project, which brings a fully functional photonics lab on the road and to your campuses and your schools. Um, just some housekeeping. Throughout the talk, you can submit questions through the Q&A tool, um, which is here on the screen. And those questions will be addressed at the end of the talk. The mobile lab has been an idea that we've had at Thor Labs for over 20 years. It started with Alex Cable, our founder and CEO's vision of wanting a products and service oriented mobile photonics lab that could visit our customers and give them access to our latest and greatest technology. In the end of 2022, Alex, along with our president of Thor Labs, Jen Cable, and myself spent a lot of time rethinking the concept and idea behind the mobile lab and making it a purely educational play. What we wanted to do was create a lab that could visit universities, colleges, and high schools and bring the field of photonics into various communities. Bill will tell us all about the different types of photonics education experiences we're curating. And Noah, you'll go into a lot of detail today about how we actually got a photonics lab into a trailer and put it on the road. Um, it's been a really exciting project for um, all of Thor Labs and it's been a really hands-on and collaborative effort. And so we're really excited to bring this to you today. The mobile lab experience really starts with curating a number of educational experiences. Bill, you've been put in this new role of leading our Thor Labs Learning Division. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and what the team is working on moving forward? Right, so the Thor Labs Learning Division really came out from a lot of efforts going on across the company. So a lot of us love doing education and outreach, and we've been doing it in our free time in between a lot of our other work activities. All of us starting from scratch, really presenting it, and that'd be kind of the end of it. And so the hope was if we can build upon all of our efforts and really add them all together, we can do a lot of new and innovative ways of doing outreach and education. And so you look at our video insights, you know, we have our lab trainings, we have internal trainings and EDU kits, you know, a lot of all these different education activities are going on. And so putting them all together, bringing them to the students on location with their campus brought up the idea of let's do a mobile lab. And that's a great segue to bringing Noah Shaw into the discussion. Noah, you came in as an intern earlier this year and were given a really ambitious project of helping us put a mobile lab literally on the road. Yeah. What has that experience been like and really what have you been up to to make that happen? Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, like from the start in say June till now, I couldn't even imagine that we've gotten this much done and this gone this far along. Um, so we started, we bought a bear trailer and it had nothing in it and we had to make a photonics lab out of it. So it was a big ask, but we got it done. A lot of time spent working out the layout inside. Uh, we got two optics tables in there and it really feels like a lab now. And that's what we aim to do with it. Um, so we have over 3000 pounds of photonics equipment in it. Uh, we have all the photonics equipment we need to run our courses, including our intro to photonics course, our quantum optics experience, and our OCT imaging experience. Um, so it's been a blast to work on this project for sure. And you might be the only intern in the history of the photonics industry who had to buy a truck in a trailer. Yeah. What was that experience like to even just go out and have to secure these you know, high cost items and put them into operation? Well, I remember just like, looking at trucks and being like, wow, I get to buy this <laughs> with someone else's money. <laughs> it was amazing. So bought the truck, bought the trailer. We actually test drove a few trucks together. And uh, I, like when it got here, when everything was delivered, I'm like, wow, this is happening. And that's been a saying that we've you know, used all the time is this is happening. <laughs> it is happening and yeah. you've made it work. So thank you so much for yeah, all your contributions, Noah. All right, so you bought a truck, bought a trailer, and then you had to outfit it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges outfitting it and some of the key design decisions that were made to make sure it was accessible, that it was environmentally friendly and things like that. 
Yeah, that's a great point. We wanted it to be as much as a photonics lab as possible and mobile, of course. Um, so that was a big challenge. You know, we had to figure out the layout of the optical tables inside, um, how to mount them, how to secure them. Um, these things were not designed exactly to be transported thousands of miles across the country. So there was a lot of engineering and thought that went behind that. Um, additionally, with v in terms of vibration, we were concerned about running a generator and also the environmental impact of that of running a generator. So we outfitted it with a 20 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery system with solar panels on the roof as well. So that'll keep us running for one or two days without the need for a generator at all. And of course we can recharge with energy from the sun. Um, in terms of interior layout, we have capacity of 15 people, including um, students and instructors. As well, we're wheelchair accessible. We have a ramp that we can deploy if necessary. And uh, we're always trying to you know, adhere to laser, laser safety standards. We have laser curtains, and we uh, supply students with all the necessary safety equipment as well. So. That's really great. And I think it's worth mentioning also, you've become an expert truck driver yeah. uh, and an expert in battery systems and solar systems. Quite a so. few miles under my belt. And I remember when I was still as a, working as an intern, just spending hours and hours researching battery systems. So I know more about batteries than I ever thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So a student walks up to the lab. What do they see? What does it feel like? And then when they get inside, what is that experience like? So one of the first things they'll see is, of course, the lab, but also to the tent, which is usually between the truck and the trailer. Big Red Thor Labs tent, we have a table with um, someone to greet you. Sometimes it's myself, sometimes it, someone else will join me. Um, we have t-shirts, we have lab snacks, um, and we'll offer to check you in, and then you can head up to the mobile lab, and usually what the first demo you'll interact with is the OCT demo. You go through the lab, and then you're encouraged to stop back outside where you can grab a t-shirt, grab some information about Thor Labs. Um, we have career information, information about internships, um, which students always appreciate. I think that's been a big surprise for us mm -hmm. is the amount of interest in careers at Thor Labs. Bill, I know that's something that you've really uh, shown a lot of interest in is how can we ensure that we're advocating for the photonics community as a whole? creating awareness for jobs as well as um, for opportunities here at Thor Labs. Maybe tell us a little bit more about what we're doing to create that awareness. Yeah, I mean, one of the first things is really just creating awareness about the photonics community itself. You know, so many of us have gotten involved by happen chance. You know, it was a conversation with an advisor or you happen to see a job posting somewhere, but very few of us said, oh, I want to work in the photonics industry because most of us don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so that's number one, is just making the awareness about photonics. Then it's having the people from the company on site, you know, being able to talk to somebody, what is the day-to-day -day about working in the industry? What is it like to work at Thor Labs? What are the different types of roles that I can have? There's so many roles that people aren't even aware of. They think, oh, I'm an engineer, I must be a design engineer. But you know, there's all kinds of supporting roles, tech support, there's marketing, there's quality control. There's so many things that people can do and they just don't know. And so that's the next big piece is just informing people about the careers that they could have. Well, and it sounds like at Thor Labs, you can come in as a sales enablement intern and become a truck driver. So there's all sorts <laughs> of opportunities in the photonics industry for, uh, for the right people, right? Okay. So, yeah. so cool. So Bill, obviously the workforce aspect of getting the mobile lab on the road has been uh, incredibly surprising and rewarding for us. But really, we're there to lay down some fundamentals in uh, optics, photonics, and related technologies. Tell us a little bit about the experiences you and your team are curating and how we're uh, deploying them in the mobile lab. Right. So for our intro to photonics, we have basically three main technologies that we're working on. And so the first is biomedical optics and imaging. So we have a fully functioning OCT system that's right there on the front of the trailer. We have people come up, being able to put their fingers underneath, see inside their skin, look under their nails, and then relate that back into ophthalmology and show that, okay, these are the types of images that are now being acquired during a routine eye exam. All right, so Bill, really quick, OCT is something that we use every day at Thor Labs. We, we all know what it is, but maybe for some of our viewers, what is OCT and why is it so interesting in the applications you discussed? So OCT stands for Optical Coherence Tomography. So optical meaning we're using light and optics. Coherence is a property of the light and we use that in order to get our information in depth. And tomography allows us to create a cross-sectional image of our sample. 
So all together, it allows us to create subsurface images of our samples very quickly. And so we have our, the students will come up, they'll put their fingers underneath, they'll image inside of their fingers, underneath their nails, and then we relate that and show that an image of the retina. So you know, people are doing this during their routine eye exams. They're getting an OCT image of their retina, not even aware of what it is. That's really cool, and I think that exemplifies what we're looking to do to connect people to uh, the photonics technologies behind things in everyday life. So thanks for taking the time to share that. Um, what are some of the other experiences and technologies that we're demonstrating inside the mobile lab? So next up we have our spectroscopy table. And so we look to start beginning relating wavelengths with their colors. You know, most people know you put white light through a prism and they see the rainbow. But then taking that another step and saying, well, each of these colors has a different wavelength associated with it. And once we know that, then we can create spectra. And using spectra of our samples, we can use that for identification. And so if we send light through our sample, we measure how the different wavelengths interact with it. And then using those spectral signatures, we can say, oh, there's water absorption and there's CO2 absorption in the air using the devices that are there on the table. And what are some real life applications of spectroscopy that people might connect with? So for the one specifically on the lab, you know, the, the OSA that we have is using the wavelengths that are very similar to what's being used on the James Webb telescope. So they're looking at these planets very far away, looking at the spectral signatures that are coming back, and being able to use that to identify what different molecules are on that planet without ever going there. Wow, that's really cool. And I know that the, we have two demos that are like the favorite of all the students coming through. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about those. My favorite being the optical fiber demo, just to tell you the truth, that, that's by far <laughs> my favorite. So the, our, our last table is our optical communications table. And so we start off you know, doing a light and sound demo. So we have music that's playing on a laptop. We send that electrical signal and essentially modulate our laser and send that laser beam traveling in free space to a detector. That detector converts that optical signal back into electrical signal and it plays on the speaker. So now we have light traveling in space. We have optics that we can control how much light actually gets through so the students can control the volume of what's played on the speaker by changing the optic. They can put their hand in front of it and block the beam all together. And just demonstrating that we can send communications with light. So we go on from that demo essentially saying, well, we can't send laser beams all over the place to get data to our homes, right? Everybody needs their broadband internet in their home to do whatever they want to do. And so we send optics, or well, we send light using optical fiber. And so we have a device on the table. It shows a blown up view of what fiber looks like since it's so small. You know, it, the core that the light travels in is the width of a human hair or smaller. And so being able to actually see what the fiber looks like first, and then we have a demo to show how it works. And so we send light through a water bottle, showing that, well, if light just travels through the bottle, it goes in a straight line. But then we line it up with a hole in the bottle and pull the plug, and the light is guided by the water down into a bucket, showing that, well, now using that water, we can bring that light down into a bucket as opposed to it traveling in straight lines and essentially relating that to how fiber works. Yeah, and I think these are really good examples of how we can connect fundamentals in photonics to a broader community. Um, we, those are more in our intro to photonics umbrella, but we do have additional experiences that are a little more advanced. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about some of those? Sure. Uh, so we started off with some of our lab basics. So the idea was trying to get some people that were new to the lab, hopefully working a little bit faster. Uh, so we did some courses on how to collimate light from an LED, how to choose your lens to collimate your light, and then how to essentially couple light into fiber. And then we had some other experiences with different topics. And so we have our quantum optics kit. So we have a, an educational kit that we released this year. And so we have two of those kits on the trailer where people can interact with them, align single photons to their detectors, measure the correlations and see how does a quantum light source that's giving single photons behave compared to a classical light source like a regular laser pointer. And I did ask you to explain OCT. I will not ask you to explain quantum optics. I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> but I will say, and Noah, you've had the pleasure, I think, of setting the system up with yeah. the tech support and applications teams a few times. It is a really cool experience. Oh, it is, for sure. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know much about it, but what can I say about seeing it? The quantum optics experience is one of the most hands-on experience with the students, and for that reason we get a lot of great student engagement. And it's just great to see you know, students work hands-on with our instructors and with the kit itself. And also, we have to close the trailer entirely to make it entirely dark for that experience. So it's entirely dark, it's like a movie there, there, and there, and it's just a great way to show how quantum optics works. I think that's really cool that we can close the trailer up and mm -hmm. it's really a purely dark functional photonics lab for high sensitivity, light imaging, and other experiments. So thanks for highlighting that. Yeah. So Bill, we do have some other experiences that uh, we're deploying. Can you tell us a little bit about both the OCT imaging uh, learning hands-on experience as well as the fiber processing demos? So with the OCT imaging, we expanded upon our intro to photonics. So essentially talking about what are the different applications of OCT, what are the different system components. We have two breadboards essentially showing the different mechanisms to create your image. And then we have the system there for the students to play with, look at the different trade-offs between imaging and imaging depth, and different samples that they can look at. Then with the fiber processing, we have our equipment there that we can create lenses on the ends of fiber, see how the different ways you could focus light out of the fiber, and then look at tapering, how do you cleave fiber, especially with some of the specialty types of fibers. That sounds really great. And again, these are hands-on experiences, so the students get to really learn how to you know, run an OCT system and process fiber. So um, really great work by you and the team. Um, so the real fun part is traveling with this mobile lab. Noah, Photonics West, what's our plan and how are we going to get there? A lot of driving. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've been traveling across the East Coast for the last few months, uh, some early September. Visited Rochester up in New York, um, visited Boston for two weeks, um, and we spent a lot of time in our home state of New Jersey as well, visiting universities and high schools locally. Um, and then we headed down south uh, two weeks ago to North Carolina. And currently, the mobile lab is in South Carolina, um, doing visiting some schools there. And uh, we got to get out to Arizona and California before next year, ideally. So, um, and then we'll end up in Photonics West in February. So, very strategic to avoid the North once the cold weather came exactly, in. Exactly. Yeah, we don't want to break out the snow chains. So, <laughs> at least yet. And now. Uh, it's clear that you've been a major part of all of these events, um, obviously getting the truck and trailer there, but really engaging the students and learners. What are some of the really cool things you've heard back from the students that go through the lab or the communities that we're presenting in? Yeah, so I've heard a lot of great responses, both, um, you know, we have a little book that students can write comments in and then just overhearing things all the time. Um, so when I'm at the tent, I can usually overhear some comments that are going on at the OCT demo, which is on the stage. And students just light up when they see, you know, that they can put their finger under the scanner and see a few millimeters into their skin. Um, additionally, I've heard that, you know, this trailer is lit. This trailer is dope. Um, throw some Gen Z lingo in there. Um, and then I've heard that, you know, students have seen this on YouTube, specifically an eight-year-old was like, oh, I saw that on YouTube and I thought it was fake, but it's not fake because it's right in front of me. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, a lot of questions about Thor Labs as a brand, um, a lot of questions about what's the meaning behind our dog and how did that come to be? So we do hear about the dog a lot. There's a giant dog behind me. So maybe we tell uh, our viewers a little bit about where the dog came from. Bill, to put you on the spot, you've been here the longest of the three of us. What is the story behind the dog? So my understanding is that Alex had a dog. It was a lab. It was named Thor and eventually the name Thor Labs came to be. He does paint the dogs, and so if you look around our buildings, there are big paintings of dogs. Essentially, every few years, he paints a new one, and that becomes the mascot that we're running with. Yeah, that's really cool. Noah, you had also mentioned something I wanted to touch on, that we have seen a lot of younger kids, especially at the community events, thinking about the Cambridge Science Festival, for instance. We had hundreds of kids under the age of probably 15 or even 12, um, anything in store for them for the upcoming events? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we only had adult sized t-shirts at that event, unfortunately. So we were handing them out to kids and they looked like dresses on these kids because they were so long. So we really took that back and we we're like, we need kids sized t-shirts. So that's currently in the works. We have a sample coming in within the next few weeks. Um, so we're always taking this feedback, whether it's in the book, whether we overhear it, and we're working to improve our mobile lab based on it. 
Yeah, I think that's really great. Um, one last question around swag. T-shirts versus lab snacks. Has there been a favorite from the community yet? So the T-shirts are a favorite because of the dog has, it has the dog on it. But I mean, you can't beat free snacks. I mean, <laughs> students take them all the time and like, oh, this is going to be my lunch today. So. <laughs> Serving their purpose. Exactly. That's cool. And now we're going to take a minute to hear from uh, two professors who have had the opportunity to have the mobile lab experience visit their campus. Uh, the first will be a Dr. Alexis Vogt at Monroe Community College. And second, we'll hear from Dr. Ruby Gu at Stonehill College. Hi, I'm Alexis Vogt. I'm professor and chair of the optics program at Monroe Community College here in Rochester, New York. We were thrilled to have the Thor Labs Mobile Labs come to visit our campus. And we had a really wonderful experience. It was a terrific way for our own students within our optics program to see many of the demonstrations and phenomena that we had discussed in class and see it firsthand brought to them by being pulled by a truck onto the campus right in their parking lot. So we took all of our classes out from our courses and we went into the parking lot area where the trailer was set up and the students loved it. They had a really great time just appreciating and seeing the wonders of optics and to see it all explained by the fabulous Thor Labs team that brought the mobile lab experience with them. It was really a wonderful way to bring home what we talked about in the classroom and so for the students to be able to experience it firsthand. And what's so fabulous about this field of optics is it's beautiful that there are so many things you can explain by visually looking at them. So to see the colors and to see that the way that the laser beam is traveling through the stream of water really, really resonates with the students when we're talking about optical fibers, for example. What really struck me, though, and was I thought perhaps most impactful were the students who happened to be parking their cars and walking into campus. And when they walked by and they saw what was going on, they wanted to be part of the experience. And so they learned about optics. These were students who attend MCC already, but haven't studied optics. They're studying other majors. And so this is a wonderful outreach tool to reach people who don't know what optics even means for them to be able to see optics. And it's not just to talk about it and say it's part of our smartphones and it's part of satellites and backup cameras and autonomous vehicles and all these wonderful things, but to actually be able to walk through the trailer and observe the demonstrations that are optics. And we have since given tours to some of those students and brought them into our optics program. So we have seen firsthand the impact that this mobile lab experience can have in introducing people to our wonderful field and bringing them into the program. I was also really fortunate to arrange that the mobile lab after visiting Monroe Community College drove down the road and spent time at Brighton High School. And at the high school, they had hundreds of students who came out from their physics as well as their MCC optics dual enrollment high school classes to walk through the trailers. And they enjoyed everything from standing outside and hanging out with the Thor Labs people and getting their lab snacks and their t-shirts, but also all of the demonstrations as well. And for them, it was a way for them to be able to visualize optics that they too had been hearing about in their classrooms or in their physics classes. I want to also mention we were fortunate to have the superintendent of the Brighton schools, Dr. Kevin McGowan, walk through the, th the mobile labs as well. And I wasn't I wasn't aware he was going to be there, but after he went through, I saw him at a different event and he told me how blown away he was by the experience. He found it incredibly impressive and he himself is a very impressive individual. In fact, he was just awarded superintendent of the year for the United States. So he comes with very high regard and very high standards as well. But for him to see this and experience the mobile lab from a superintendent's and administrator's perspective and recognize the benefit that it brought to his students in his own high school and introduce them to this remarkable field of optics was really powerful. It was really powerful to hear how much he enjoyed the experience as well. So we're really grateful that the mobile lab came to Rochester. We can't wait for it to return to come back through as well, but we saw the benefits both on our campus here at Monroe Community College and down the road at Brighton High School as well. So thank you to the entire team who organized the event, Mike Mohammadi and Bill Warger and everybody else who was involved. We really found it extraordinarily valuable and we're grateful to be part of the experience. 
Hi everyone, uh, this is Ruby from Stonehill College. Uh, we start to work with the photonics initiatives at Stonehill back in 2017, and uh, we had a state-of-the-art photonics lab uh, supported by Massachusetts State. And we currently offer photonics majors and minors and also a certificate program. We really appreciate uh, the SAR Labs mobile lab come on our campus to actually raise a big awareness uh, for our students, faculty, and the staff on campus to be aware this photonics, uh, uh, what actually photonics is. I think this experience for us is incredibly uh, positive and impactive, impactful. Uh, it's not only brought a dynamic and engaging um, environment on campus, but also create a buzz of excitement among students, faculty, and actually everyone uh, who ever come to the event. Uh, all the experiments, uh, the setups uh, are so innovative and it provides a unique and hands-on learning experience for all the attendees. I got a lot of um, uh, great feedbacks after this experience. And also um, we have over uh, 100 students, faculty and visitors come to visit the lab. That's super excited for us. It's definitely raised a good awareness about the photonics. Uh, I think the Sora Labs did a great job to really uh, to uh, raise awareness in this field. And you know that a lot of people and uh, uh, students, parents uh, never heard about photonics, this word. We really appreciate uh, Sora Labs uh, do this work, do this lead. Uh, for these initiatives. Well, thank you, Dr. Vogt and Dr. Gu for sharing your thoughts on the Thor Labs mobile lab experience. We were really excited to visit both of your colleges. Okay, and Noah, now that we're wrapping up, maybe tell us a little bit about how viewers can follow our journey, give us feedback on where they'd like to see the mobile lab, what types of content they're interested in hearing about, and maybe give yourself a plug for your the really cool vlog that you've been putting out. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's two social media platforms that we're very active on with the mobile lab. Uh, we're on Instagram and as well YouTube. As you mentioned, we do bi-weekly uh, vlogs. So it kind of wraps up what we've been up to for the past two weeks, um, what schools we've visited, and what areas of the country we are. As well, if you'd like to reach us directly, you can always email us and you can visit our website for more information about all things mobile lab. And all those links are somewhere on this screen. So to yeah. find out more, you can just Feel click around. Click on them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this was really great. Um, both of you have done so much work to not only get all the content together and build a team to create the educational experiences, but obviously, Noah, I mean, doing most of the heavy lifting to literally get this thing on the road. You've done an exceptional job, and it's really been a pleasure to work with you both. Um, at this point, we're going to move on to the Q&A section of the webinar. Um, and I guess I'll just jump right in by looking at some of the questions that have come in. Um, <clears throat> okay, the first question, how do we choose what venues to visit and how would a venue get on the schedule? Is there a request form online? Noah, that sounds like a great question for you. So there is a request form online. Um, if you fill that out, that'll go directly to our mobile lab team. Um, we review all of the applications. Um, it is based on where we are in the country. Um, so we have a route plan for next year, and we're going to follow that route roughly. Um, but we're always, you know, looking for more schools to visit. And Bill, just to add on to that question, but it's something you and I have discussed a lot. We're not just visiting the, you know, major research institutions across the country, right? Can you tell us a little bit about our goal and, and vision to visit um, a variety of schools that may not have the same level of access to photonics tools and technologies and learning? Yeah, we started out with a lot of our colleagues that we've worked with in the past and people that we knew would give us feedback. But really our hope is to reach out a lot of those universities that don't have the resources, don't have photonics labs, and bring the equipment that they wouldn't otherwise have the chance to play with. 
And so going to these universities and especially a lot of the minority serving institutions and the HBCUs and really reaching out to the overall community. And that's a call to the community to let us know where we should be going, where you would like to see the um, both the education perspective, but, all, but also access to the uh, the equipment that we'll be bringing with us. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Uh, the next question is, can a specific topic, process, or product be requested for demonstration, or do we maintain a relatively standard approach with the same overview? It's a great question for you, Bill. <laughs> So our overview, our intro to photonics has been, we've been using a lot of the same equipment and doing that. So it's always there, it's always being checked to make sure it works. But we do always take requests if somebody has something they want to specifically see, especially if we're there for multiple day events. We happily coordinate something to bring other equipment in for people to try out. That's really great. Thanks, Bill. Um, Noah, this one's for you. How much time does it take to go through the lab? So it depends how busy the line is. Sometimes we get a little backed up, but we do our best to you know, get people through the lab. Um, so I'm gonna say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Sometimes when it's quiet, students will stay longer. They have more questions. Sometimes when it's busier, they'll walk through a little bit faster, but it's all based on your pace as well. And to be clear, that's for the more intro to photonics exactly. experiences, yeah. whereas the more sophisticated courses, Bill, how long are those courses? We've been trying to essentially align them with course periods. So they're on the order of about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Really cool, thanks. Um, so here's one probably from uh, one of our colleagues in Europe. <laughs> Is there a plan to get one of these tour touring around the uh, EU? So will, will we have a European version? Um, I'd love to see it in the UK, Noah, just to see how you buy a truck and trailer and drive it on the other side of the road. Might have to be a little but, smaller. <laughs> but the question was specific about the EU. so. Um, yeah, have we thought about a European version? It's been thought about, yeah, taking the mobile lab initiative and all the initiatives behind it global is definitely, you know, a goal of ours. Um, for now, we're focusing on the United States, but we're always keeping it in the back of the mind. But I think, Bill, we are working through your learning division around experiences that may not be the mobile lab, but our uh, outreach to customers, for instance, um, our Photonics Academy in Germany, which is a mostly internal initiative at this point, but also our demo and training lab in our uh, facility in China. So maybe tell us a little bit about how we are ensuring that customers in other regions of the world have access to the same learning technology, et cetera, without actually having a mobile lab show up to their campus. Yeah, I mean, so one of the things we're taking all of our lessons learned from presenting these demos all over the country and saying, okay, what's the best way to do these demos? And then can we kit them up and provide them to other locations? And so making it a little bit easier for people to go off on location, even in the United States, because we only have the one mobile lab at this point, you know, we, there's a lot of people to reach out to and how best can we reach out to them? And so that's one aspect is kidding them. You know, there's all these internal trainings that we are doing now just to get all of our engineers who are hired as an electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, really introducing them to photonics and, and understanding of the overall field. And so after we essentially establish those internally, working out all the bugs and the kinks, then we're going to be presenting them externally as well. I think that's really exciting. And you did touch on a, the last question actually, so I don't know if you can see the screen. Um, is there a plan or a need for a second mobile lab in North America? No, that, that one sounds like a great question for you. Do you, you have the bandwidth to buy some more trucks and trailers and get them on the road? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always been a plan for a mobile lab boat and a mobile lab helicopter, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I think with that said, uh, we'll wrap up today's webinar. We'd like to thank everyone for attending. We hope you got to learn a lot about our vision for not only the Thor Labs learning division that uh, Bill is leading, but also the Thor Labs mobile lab experience. Um, we have a lot of different experiences in the pipeline that are independent of both of these initiatives. So we urge you to check back frequently. Um, and we really want to hear from you. You know, this the whole initiative behind all of this is creating something for our community, both our photonic communities, as well as the communities we serve. So we are very, uh, to use our phrase, hungry for your thoughts. And um, we all three of us would personally love to hear from you, your ideas for mobile lab experiences and other learning experiences you'd love to see from Thor Labs. So with that said, thank you all for your time. And we wish you a great day.